Okay, thanks for renting our van. This is Poppy. Come on in. I'll show you how to pop the top. And come on in here. Do uh, you want to show them these latches? Well, first you want to undo the safety belt here. And there's two latches that you push down. If there's another person, they can push up. But if you're just solo, you can just kind of push it with your head. And then just go ahead and give it a lift. And now that's popped, and here you can see this is a sleeping area for two. Uh, while you're in the van, you can fold this back, like an accordion, fold it up, and make sure it's behind the two, actually there's just one, the one uh, plastic piece here, so it doesn't fall forward. Okay, now you have room to do cooking, if you'd like. So here, I'll show you... Uh, how the stove works. On this counter, there are two latches that you pull up. Very simple feature here. It pops this up. Now you have your little kitchenette. You have a sink. Pop up here, and then you flip this towards you to run the water. Okay, and then to use the stove, you're gonna go ahead and pull this down. This up. Then you're gonna kind of lift this over and this latches at the top here. So now you have a stove function. In the drawer we keep a lighter. We also have utensils. And then you're gonna come over here. So the propane's on right now. You're not gonna drive with the propane on and I'll show you how to turn that on when we walk around the van. But I do have it on now to make this easier. So I go ahead and turn the stove on and I'll use the lighter to light and both sides are good to go. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And that away. I'm going to go ahead and take this down. Now you want to make sure this comes up and over and holds it in place and that this comes back, folds back down into the sink. And then you can go ahead and this gets caught a little bit sometimes on the trim. You just push it over. And there you have it. Okay. Next I'll show you how to pull out the bed. So the seat here will turn into a, a bed that'll sleep too. <clears throat> so your first thing you want to do is grab the, the gray latch here and pull. Pull the bed out. Pull the seat out so that it's about as far as, far as it goes. And then there's a black lever. So what you're going to do is you're going to pull it toward you and then lift it up. That's it. So this is the bed. Um, you can push it back down through there. Uh, these pads can fold down on top and then you can sleep two down here as well and I do ask that you do cover we'll leave sheets for you but to cover this uh, both beds with a sheet when you're sleeping on it to put it back into place you're gonna pull this back out pull up and the seat belts will likely fall in to the uh, beneath the area beneath which is fine for now so then pull that up and then again grab the gray handle and then you're just gonna slide it back and there's the seatbelt here, and you're gonna reach in and make sure you pull out the seatbelts. There's one, I'll get the other one later. Here's a nice little feature, a little cup holder, pop it out. <clears throat> also show you if you're renting it in a, a time where you might want some heat, you will wanna have the propane on, which it is now. You're gonna go ahead and set your temperature here, um, and then you're going to look under here, there is a little lever. And if you press it to the left, that's going to be um, how to switch it on. It's not going to come on right now because it's pretty warm today, but I can crank it. Um, and you can hear it takes a little bit, but it will come on. There it goes. And it starts to blow. At first, it won't feel hot, but it'll warm up pretty quickly. And it's blowing out here. That'll get nice and toasty. So there's your heat. And then I do, do remember to, you do want to turn this off when you're not using it. So then you flip that switch back to the right and I always turn the temperature down too okay um, show everyone how to use the table here there, it comes with two tables I'll just take one table out for now there's two as I mentioned stored here fits nicely in and all you're gonna do is pop the leg up here <clears throat> and 
this area is gonna fit nicely under this ledge here. It's like a little, it fits right into place nicely. So kind of want to start it kind of tipped up, get it in the let, uh, get it in that groove, kind of drop it down. Once it's in the groove, you can slide it, lift it up and slide it to wherever you might want it. Sometimes it's nice if you're somewhere, want to grab lunch or whatever, you can just kind of put it out, sit here and eat. So that's a nice feature. Same way it went in, same way it comes out, just lift it up. And go ahead, this pulls out towards you, latch that in place. And then you go ahead and you put it back in here and I'll, I'll strap it in after, but the, you'll see that there's um, these straps that go around and connect and it'll fit nice and snug. Um, I have a broom in here. There's a fire extinguisher down here. Um, up here you do have your um, smoke alarm or fire alarm and your carbon monoxide alarm as well. And if you are cooking in here, I really recommend having doors open, windows open. And I even recommend opening this moonroof latch too. Um, it is a sensitive uh, alarm here. So if it does go off, just wave something in front of it. These lights will run off of a house battery or the auxiliary battery. So you don't have to worry about draining the car battery as these are on. So that's one light. This little LED light here was installed recently. It's sensitive to the touch, has three settings and off. If you're finding that it's not working, it's probably because this became a little loose and it just needs to make sure it's plugged in tight. Uh, these lights also run off the house battery. So if you're hanging out in here in the evening, you can run these, no problem. You're not gonna drain the car battery. Four of those. Um, the panel here <clears throat> shows levels. So if you press it up, you'll see that um, the holding tank, which is the gray water, is empty, where it should be when I rent it to you. The fresh water tank is full, also where it should be when I rent it to you. And the this is the propane gas and it's full, I just filled it. So there you can see that. And this is the house battery showing you have good condition, which is where it should remain. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the fridge. So. The fridge will work if you're plugged in, and I'll show you how you can plug the vehicle in in just a little bit. But if you do are somewhere where you can plug in and hook up, um, you're gonna go ahead and hit that first one here, make sure it lights up. So no, now it's on off. Once I hit that, that red light comes on there. And now it's saying run off the electrical mode, and then you can run the fridge this way. It will take a while to get cold, so don't worry if it doesn't get cold right away. It takes quite some it takes many hours and then you'll find that it does get cold once you get it cold from being plugged in and you are driving somewhere you can <clears throat> you can go ahead and switch it to the battery mode right here as you're driving the battery is charging in the, ha the house battery as you're driving so this will continue to keep it cold but it won't be enough to just put this on and drive and you're not gonna you shouldn't expect to get a cold fridge so there's an option to run it off propane, which I haven't used, and you're welcome to play around with that, but I, I haven't done it. Um, one thing that I recommend for folks who are just going for a couple days is maybe just to have a cooler with your food or to get dry ice. Um, and if you get about a pound and a half of dry ice per day, that should cover, cover you in here, and you can keep some food nice and cold. If you put anything on the dry ice, though, you will freeze it, so just be aware of that. So a lot of times we just use the fridge for storage with our dry goods and then just bring a cooler, so up to you. Now these electrical outlets that you see here and uh, maybe uh, I think there's other ones in the back of the van, they will only work if you're plugged in with the electrical cord and I'm gonna show you again how to do that. Otherwise these won't work, just off the battery. I wanna show you too that this seat here, uh, this is a passenger seat, it does swivel and turn around. Um, there's a I'm gonna open this door so you can see. Come right over here, or can you see it from here? There, this lever. You kind of lift up, and the seat back has to be up. Not up high enough. Apologies for that. There's a little lever on the side that turns to adjust the seat back. Here, you turn it toward that way, this way 
pull it forward. You need to have that pretty far forward. But then at that point, you can pull up on this black level and turn it. Now you can face the seat here, hanging out. And, and you should make note that you cannot start the vehicle if the seat is positioned this way. But seat must be facing forward and clicked into place in order to drive. Okay, I think I'm gonna now show you some of the outside features. and AC. Yeah, let's talk about that. AC. So for right now, till we sort this out, if you come up here, you know, let's talk about some of the driving things. There's not too much. Drive's like a, a regular vehicle. It's fun to drive. Um, I don't have to talk too much about that. But for now, until we get this dealt with, I um, would suggest using this, these um, buttons here. So you have your AC, AC, turn it on, AC here. And uh, you can get the van pretty cool this way. We're having an issue with the using these for the rear controls. It's actually not blowing air, uh, cold air out for AC. It's almost hot, it's almost like heat coming out. So we're gonna deal with that. But for now, just keep that off and use this row for AC, if, if you're using AC. Then it gets nice and cold. And up here as well, you have um, your stereo. You have an area for USB cord to plug in. Some people have good luck plugging their phone in here and having it charge and play music off their phone. Other folks, it's they're not getting that charge. And I'll show you in the back where you can charge your phone. This isn't working, but we have another light, uh, another area in the back of the van that you can charge. So just be aware of that. Another thing to be aware of um, is that here you can adjust the mirrors. Um, you can adjust the passenger mirror here electric with this electrical feature but unfortunately the feature doesn't work on the driver's side so you will have to just address, adjust it manually okay. good now let's take a look at some of the things I noted about outside the features so we'll go around this way you got your gas here fill it up I have it so there is a lock on it but we are keeping it unlocked uh, if it does happen to get locked for whatever reason the the key for this is also on the keychain when you rent the vehicle but yeah here you have your gas I want to also mention you can use uh, just regular unleaded gas that's fine um, but when you go ahead and after you fill it and you turn this make sure you hear a click or two or three even um, otherwise you might start smelling gas coming into the vehicle so that should be nice and tight. There you have your gas. If you come down here, you'll see features like this on the vehicle and that's just exhaust for when you're um, cooking in there. If you come down here, I mentioned I turned the propane on already. So it's on, righty tighty, right? So all the way to the right, you're gonna have it off. So I'm gonna turn it off now. I um, suggest not driving with your propane turned on. So always making sure when you leave your site or wherever you are for the night to make sure that's off when you start driving. This area here is where the propane gets filled, but you don't have to worry about that. I'll always make sure you have enough propane for your trip, and I always make sure to uh, refill it as needed. So you don't have to worry about it, but I want you to know that's there. And then if you come over here, um, if you're going for any length of time, you might find you need to empty your gray water. You don't have to empty it upon return. I'm, I'm happy to do that, but the way you do it is, if you are needing to, is you pull this black cap off here comes off you might have to twist it a little bit it just kind of pulls off and then right next to it there's a lever that pulls out kind of to the right you won't see anything come out now because there's not really any water and it's, it's empty right now so there you have it and you push that back in and you put the cap back on so you can empty in empty stations or um, a lot of campsites have those if you are plugging in this is the area of the vehicle that you attach the cord and I'll show you where we store it. So that's just so you know, it's here on the driver's side. I'll show you where we store that now. If you come around back, um, back of the vehicle, here we are, pop up the tailgate. And a couple features back here to note. Hopefully you don't need to use this ever, but this is where all the um, electrical is for the the house, the 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 actual not the car that's up front but uh this is just for like the refrigerator lamps you can see there so you don't need that but that's where you find it if something were to go wrong 
That's right. So this is um, this hose will work if you if you pull it all the way out, it pinches it. So when you turn it on, it won't work. The button, if you press it to the left, is on, and you want to push the hose back in just a little bit so it's not pinched. And there you have water. If you need to rinse your feet, there you have it. Make sure to push it back in when you're done. But most importantly, make sure you turn this off. And the switch to the right is off. You can hear it. I don't know if you can hear it in the video. When it's running, it makes like a little bit of a humming noise. If you're somewhere loud though, you might not hear it. So just be sure, really aware that this needs to be off. If that stays on and then there's no water in the tank, it's gonna burn that pump. And that actually did happen once. So we don't want that to happen again. Okay, so off. If you are somewhere, we're, again, we're gonna fill the water for you. I think it holds 13 gallons. We, we fill it um, from our tap with a hose. You need a hose to fill it. So if you're anywhere and you're using a lot of water, if you're anywhere for any length of time, you might need to refill it. Um, and the way you do that is so you pull this out, twist this, water goes in here. Hose goes in and you just fill it. Basically just fill it until, and don't turn it on full blast, but turn it on enough that's filling pretty quickly and just watch it and you'll just see it start pouring back out and then just stop. At that point, turn, on, turn it off and you're filled. Um, if you are filling this up again, that's a good indication you need to empty the gray water because it's not gonna hold um, two rounds of this filled. I think the gray water holds about 10 to 13 gallons as well. So um, there you have that. I was mentioning that there's a, the um, electrical the plug, basically. So if you lift this up, there's a little compartment under here. Can, can you see? And this is where I'm storing the plug to plug in. If you're somewhere where you can connect. And that's all you really need to know. Okay, back here, um, I mentioned that if you're having trouble charging from the USB cord, you can go ahead and use a car charger uh, that goes into a cigarette lighter to go ahead and plug in here. And this will work if you have also have the vehicle off. So it's kind of nice to be able to charge devices if you need to when you're not running the car. Here's a um, little storage space back here. As well. And then we gotta talk about how we pull the top down, right? Mm -hmm. And then that's, that might be it. Okay, so back in to, Ah, to one more thing though, actually, as we're out here, I do want to uh, mention, I'm not going to pull this out now, but you may find that you want the awning. Maybe if you're somewhere sunny, like a sunny day like today, but you're parked for a while, a couple few days, a week or something, you may want to use the awning. Um, otherwise, it might be more of a hassle. So you push, there's one on each side, a little button. Can you see that? Push it up. And then there's one on this side too. So once they're both pressed up, there's a uh, like a vinyl awning you can pull it out two people it tends to work better pull it out there's legs that will unfold and one of the legs we have to kind of get repaired it still will work the way it is but pull it out put the legs down they're metal they kind of slide out like that and then you have your awning so make sure that that latches on both sides and you're good to go okay let's talk about putting the top down all right, we're back in. Got to put this down first. So that just lifts up, slides it down. And the mattress, make sure it's not pushed all the way back because it'll pop out the end. So just kind of pull it up to where you see a Velcro line here. Get it nice there. Um, now you're ready to begin. This is a nice two person job. It's definitely doable with one person as well. Um, and I'll tell you where the second person comes in handy. Um, but I also, right now, before I forget, don't drive with the top popped. Okay, that may seem obvious, but I did it, almost did it once. Okay, so here you go. Go ahead and grab the seatbelt here and just start pulling down slightly. This can, it's not that heavy, so you, you don't need to like yank on it real hard because if you pull it too hard, you might find, especially if you're taller than me, which most people are, you'll probably pull it down onto your head and that might not feel good. So just kind of stay low, keep yourself low and pull down. Um, as you're pulling down, you might want to kind of pull some of this 
fabric in the canvas. And this is where the second person comes in handy. The second person can be on the outside of the vehicle, pushing the canvas back in as the other person sort of lowering it. Because it's best to not have the canvas popped out as you're driving, it's just, it could damage it. But uh, ideally you push it all in and you start pulling this down. Kind of, you can use, there's two black handles that you can use to help you with that. And I'm just sort of freeing um, these two holes here where this, where this is gonna latch in. And this black bolt is gonna come down right in here. So you definitely need to free that space. And you're gonna do this nice and slow. Like I said, I use my head at this point. If you're one person, you might need to. Two people, someone else can kind of hold it up. Kind of just keep lowering it. And once I see that it's clear, I let it go. But that's not latched. So the, the final step is those black handles I mentioned, you're gonna pull down on each side, but you're gonna listen also for a click. There's a click there. And then I come over to this side, I pull on this handle. And there was one more click. And then again, this is the, like a safety mechanism. So you latch the seat belt. Um, there you have it. There's Poppy ready to go on the road. Propane's off, top is down and uh, enjoy.